But when we think about the self, you know, we often think about that we have control or that we have had control in the past of, you know, creating ourselves, creating our personality, uh, creating kind of like more or less the beliefs that we have about reality and about the world. Um, and it's really hard to pinpoint exactly what the self is just as a basic definition, right? So uh, I can imagine there being several different definitions across the board, you know, and so yeah. people, you, you could define the self as, you know, a set of beliefs about the world, but you could also define it as personality, but you could also define it as consciousness, awareness of my identity and my place in this world it, it comes to like self-awareness of being alive i guess that creates the self uh not only the image but also the values you know being aware you know basically what the conscience is doing just being aware of the surroundings you know we see that through the development of children you know they just become aware of where they are in the world the self is like an identity or either that or identity plays like a large plays part of a bigger picture in the self. Many. The umbrella itself is the self. And then it has identity. It has values. You know, it has, you know, um, the world's expectations, you know, basically everything around it. The self are the eyes and the lenses are everything else, you know, that you begin That's to a see. That, that's an interesting metaphor, actually. Yeah, the self is, you know, right here, but the lens is everything else. It has an impact or it affects the self and influences the self. The lenses are the beliefs that are put onto us but from society, Ooh. from other people. That's what we're going to get into next, right? Oh, man. Is, uh, what, how, what kind of lenses are we born how, with? And that's oh, what I was setting crazy. it up for, right? It's, <laughs> we don't create ourselves. We don't create our personality necessarily. The world around us creates the self that we become. Someone who's raised in a home, um, in an abusive home, is going to develop a different sense of self than someone who's raised in a loving home. Someone who's raised in a foster care system, who, whose parent, both parents passed away, they're going to have a yeah. different view of themselves. If and if they were bullied, let's say, compared to someone who grew up in a normal middle class family who was never bullied their whole life, they're going to have a different sense of self. You know, our self image comes from other people. And self-image is one component of many of the self. There's self-esteem, how we feel emotionally about ourselves. Do we feel worthless? Do we feel like we're worthwhile? And everything in between worthless and worthwhile. Esteem. And then self-efficacy. Self-efficacy gets confused with self-esteem, but it's actually how much we believe that we can accomplish a skill, accomplish a task. It's how much we believe in ourselves to do something. To use. And then, like I just mentioned, self-image. So maybe like a mental picture or a mental kind of Im imagine like idea of how we look physically and how we come off to other people. And then of course the other uh, two main things that I would say influence the self, maybe, maybe they're not, maybe they're part of the self in some way, beliefs and perceptions, you know, cause beliefs, I think that's what you're saying, right. Mm -hmm. Are the lenses, the perceptions and beliefs are the lenses, right? So those are like the yeah. components. That yeah. Well, what you're grown, yeah. Like what you grow up, into the environment itself you know yeah. which you know eventually gives you those beliefs and values and stuff like that the lenses are the environment itself that one grows up in and then the eyes are the self that are constructing i guess organizing information to get a a better understanding of where one lives and like you said the place in the world like where do i fit in all of this right in the cosmos there's so much that there is out there but what do i have specifically that i can give to the world it's hard yeah. to capture what you're saying like we can think of it like we're talking about right now in abstract terms it's so yeah, hard it's, to to make it more just like consciousness as we more found. tangible yeah because i mean it's more complicated than even what we just everything we talked about is complicated enough but when you talk about your relation to other people in the world then you dive into Bowlby's attachment theory in psychology and his theories of insecure versus secure attachments, which I've told you about this a long time ago, back in St. Mary's University, where the form where a child's development, like early infant, very young child, like the way that the parents treat the child or the caregivers mm -hmm. treat the child, the attachment they form is dependent upon how they treat the child growing up. And then that actually programs 
over 50% of what the child's personality and beliefs are about the world. I remember telling you that then you're like, what? I was like, no, yeah. that's, that's what we found. And, and so when you talk about what you're saying in relation to the world, then we have to jump into attachment theory of psychology. Is the child, does the child, and then who becomes an adult grow up with an insecure attachment style, which can be anxious, ambivalent, avoidant. So avoidant, they avoid emotions when they come up because they've because they were taught to avoid emotions by their parents because every time they express emotion, they were punished. Or anxious and ambivalent, their parents were hot. They didn't have consistent punishment. So they don't know whether they're ever doing anything right or wrong because they get punished when they do things right, but they also get punished when they do things wrong. So they become mm. anxious and ambivalent attachment. So they don't know. They never know how to please people. So they grew up with a lot of anxiety around social relationships. But then you have secure, which is the most ideal attachment. And that affects your also your image of yourself, right? Because if you believe that you're raised in a loving, caring family that had consistent discipline, but not harsh discipline, that's a secure attachment. Mm -hmm. And just quickly running through that, basically what I'm coming to on that is if you have that secure attachment, you're less likely to believe that other people are going to harm you. So you're more easily going to form positive, healthy relationships. So that all, to me, even those attachment things affect how you view yourself and, and how you view yourself compared to other people. And so are you, are you saying that maybe identity is, is, is the self or, or, or is it a component that comes after yeah. you know, being part of the world? Like I